My entire life has been lived with one false truth ringing out in my head. It's you, man. You're the problem. You'll always be the black sheep, so why even try? I realize that's a sullen attitude, and it's taken me down some really dark roads in my 32 years, but after multiple semi-recent medical diagnoses, I can finally tell you, my audience, that I've finally started accepting the mess that is my life here on Earth. My name is John. Scratch that. My name is Jonathan Compton. I was born December 17, 1991. And I am on the autism spectrum. If I had to guess, some of you watching are genuinely shocked by that. And others? I'm gonna guess you already knew that John from ARTV guy was neurodivergent. For the first time, I want to share my journey with the autism umbrella, and how not knowing a huge part of myself for more than 30 years reshaped my entire perspective on life personally and here on YouTube. Trigger warning, it's gonna get deep, and you're gonna find out a lot about me. Difficult doesn't even begin to describe it, but I'm holding on for that light at the end of the tunnel and opening up publicly here to the neighbors is a huge part of that. Okay, this feels insane to be saying out loud in one breath. I have autism, ADHD, I'm a HSP, I struggle with BED, I don't like the BEP, and I've been struggling with chronic neck, back, and knee pain over the past decade. I know what you're thinking. This guy won the genetic lottery. True, but that's not all. Come on down, generational trauma. Those afflictions left me staring down the barrel of the gun, many times thinking, holy shit. How did I even survive this long in the dark, head like a haunted house with no flashlight? This diagram kind of represents where I fall on the autism spectrum, with pics and fidgeting, depression, anxiety, and fixations being the equivalent of my big four in grunge. Mental health wasn't talked about or taken seriously in the late 90s into the early 2000s, definitely not in the Christian schools I attended, and it didn't help that I already felt disconnected from my older parents, who were 37 when I was born. In elementary school, I was the quiet, shy kid with a bowl cut. Middle school, I was the new kid with weird music and fashion taste. High school, I was popular-ish, mainly because I transformed myself into a literal class clown as a way of beating people to the punch. She's right. Yes. 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 I must have been six when I started feeling noticeably different from the other kids. I liked things done very specific ways, even little teeny things I couldn't control, like someone's shirt being unbuttoned or shoes being untied. It bothered me because I've always been a fixer. I want to fix what I see as a problem, and sometimes even my young mind would get stuck, so I fought that off by shutting up, following the rules, and trying to mimic what the other kids would do. I started living in my head, if that makes sense, and to this day, I'm really prone to daydreaming, zoning out, jumping from tab to tab in my head, and sometimes running back over past interactions, trying to analyze people's tone, trying to make sure that I'm reading it right. In school, I was never a bully's number one target or anything, but my naivety proved to be a weakness because my parents kept me so sheltered in a very religious Southern Baptist household so I just didn't see some of the traps right in front of me. I want to make it crystal clear that I don't blame my parents for most of what went down. They did their best with limited resources, so I never went without the essentials. Plus, I was very secretive and unknowingly well-versed in masking my emotion. I have specific memories of being so young, like five or six, and having to go to a professional child psychologist because I wasn't eating due to a fear that I would choke on everything. Thing, and I became obsessed with this, which really freaked my parents out. At this point, most of the details are blurry, but I just remember sitting in the office with this strange man asking me questions, and I looked out the window wondering when this would be over so I could get home to watch my favorite show, Bobby's World. Briefly, I'll touch on the binge eating thing I mentioned. Let's just say that there were heavy restrictions on food. It was clear that I already had some problems there, and as a kid that started out with all these restrictions, it put me on this path of secrecy and shamefully binging and spiraling that I still battle to this day. My heart breaks for that kid, the one who went through several of these weird aversions and obsessions with no escape plan, 
but it's immediately pieced back together, remembering just how much fun I had as a kid with my oddly specific interests, like collecting tons of Pokemon and baseball cards, organizing my room into a mini-museum, and just picking up on things I know for a fact 99% of the kids around me didn't even perceive. Wait, wait, wait. You go ahead and film the chits for a minute. I'll be ready in 15 seconds. This is speed. I always joke that my dad took me to tons of rock shows, not rock concerts, but actual rock, gym, and mineral shows because my dad was a science teacher. Hey, Walt, there's no rock show, okay? I mostly spent time with my parents or alone, and loneliness definitely crept in, but I'm an only child already. It's all I ever knew, so I made the best of it with a vivid imagination that allowed me to create animals, places, and people that interacted and lived rent-free in my head like Christopher Robin. You are the weakest mouse. Goodbye. Ah! I wrote hundreds, and I mean hundreds of shorts, both by hand and on a typewriter my grandpa gave me. Many of them were in a series I called Mouse Stories, jump-started by my love for the 1960s book The Mouse and the Motorcycle. Back then, I was a total bookworm. I won the summer reading contest at my local library at least twice, I just miss those chill days, hanging out, reading whatever books caught my eye, and I'm really happy I've started reading again as a hobby. Moving on to another obsession, a good one I'd say, March 2005 is the exact moment in time I point to for when I stopped listening to the country and gospel my parents fed me 24-7 and found music that made me feel powerful. Some friends in the neighborhood showed me artists like Fall Out Boy, 50 Cent, Metallica, The White Stripes, Offspring, System of a Down, dozens more that I took and ran with. Music was relatable and real, and it helped me channel my weird energy into headbanging, dancing, and skateboarding. But in a devastating turn of events, my parents lost our home after losing their jobs, and my confidence came crashing down as we had to move away the same year I was already switching schools. It may have been 19 years since I set foot in this room, but this is where it all started. A boombox, a tape deck, recording songs off of the radio and to actually be back here in the place where it all started, I never thought that I would have the opportunity to see this place, to be in this room, like literally my most formative years, 13 years. And that 13th year that was so transitional for me into finding the music that made me feel seen and heard. With my place on the autism spectrum being called high functioning or high masking, I managed to sort of blend into my surroundings by becoming a people pleaser that followed the rules, often because I was terrified of authority and being sent straight to hell. Authority figures left me with multiple mental scars. Shout out to the pastor that literally chased me through a church building trying to get me to confess to eating cookies, and my high school principal who sent me into multiple panic attacks in his office over the dumbest shit in the world, like putting a piece of bread on a kid's head at lunch or else having My Chemical Romance on my iPod. I'm sorry if this feels all over the place already. I'm trying to go somewhat in a straight line, but anyone else out there with ADHD, you know the struggle. Everything I did was chalked up to me being super shy or he'll grow out of it. And it kind of sucks that none of my teachers or leaders ever stopped to get to know me enough to see that this kid is struggling. By my late teens, I'm working my first real job at a movie theater, which forced me out of my shell. And I'm also attempting and almost always failing to date because I was so awkward and nervous around the opposite sex. Also was told I'm terrible at picking up on flirtatious signs from the ones that were interested. Shout out to my late friend Elise, who tragically passed in March 2017. That loss fucked me up so deeply, but taught me so much too. I just, I want to put it out there, I'll always remember and miss you well. During this late teen era, I'm always exhausted, my mind is running a million miles a minute, I'm napping every day just to keep up, and on top of that, I'm being screamed at by my employer almost every shift. So I quit that job at the end of 2012, and by the time I'm 22 a year later, most of my friends have moved away or ghosted me, so I decide to move to the coast of North Carolina for a fresh start. That was one of the worst ideas I ever had. I consider 2015 as one of the worst years of my life, and if not the worst, then absolutely the most painfully alone chamber of isolation that had me feeling like a slowly sinking ship. 
I've talked about my mental health struggles here and there, but I've never really admitted how badly I've struggled with depression and existential dread, which have drained pieces of my soul over time. Unknowingly autistic, of course, I didn't realize how much structure kept me on track and moving away from all my remaining friends and family to a place where all responsibility falls squarely on my shoulders, I crumbled under the pressure and got to a really dark place where I was strongly considering taking myself out. As a teenager around 13 or 14, I struggled some with self-harm and spiraling thoughts, but it was music that saved me, and I mean that. It was always there, even when my strict parents tried really hard to ban it. No, not gonna work, I always found a way. One night, ten years later, as a young adult in spring 2015 still living at the coast, music intervened again. I stepped outside my townhouse with nothing but my phone in my pocket and a head full of suffocating thoughts about how much of a fake and fraud I am, likely due to my struggles with imposter syndrome. I've talked before about bands like My Chem, Linkin Park, and Green Day that I credit with saving my life as a teen, so let's add the main to the list, specifically for their song, 24 Floors. Was it my first listen through American Candy? I can't remember, but I do remember being dead set on disappearing. Somehow, some way, and the transition from the song English Girls into 24 Floors landed, and its somber tone snapped me out of a spiral. Just the casual admission of wanting to jump from the hotel balcony to end it all before hearing someone's voice in your head saying, you don't want to die tonight, is so simple, but powerful. I remembered those lyrics when I moved back home, when I was verbally abused daily by my new manager at the mattress store. Some of you might remember that video I made forever ago talking about needing help, which was an extremely low point for me, and I want to say thank you to everyone that sent kind words and even financial support. Forever indebted to you guys, plus all of the songs, albums, and musicians that kept me going. So let's fast forward again to the end of my roaring 20s. Everyone knows 2020 sucked more than your mom's Roomba, but considering I had already declared 2019 to be one of my worst ever... I didn't know if I could continue raw-dogging life the way I had been for three decades. Okay, not entirely raw. I have struggled with substance abuse, and I'm not proud of it, but it needs to be said to hold myself accountable. Alcohol, pills, but primarily THC. The pandemic just exacerbated the underlying problems I was attempting to numb, and it became easier to run. In no way am I vilifying or glorifying THC. It's helped and hurt me many times. Just please be careful, it can get out of control fast if you're not mindful, and it's still something that I struggle with finding the right balance for. My wonderful, beautiful, loyal wife Hannah is my rock, and I would not be here without her. Without her support and the support of some close friends, I know that for a fact. And by the end of 2020, Hannah saw how much our pain aligned, so we finally started seeing doctors to begin our mental health journey. For me, this involved trying out therapy, which was helpful. I plan to continue when I can afford it. <laughs> On January 1st, 2021, we each started medications for anxiety and depression for the first time. It took over a year of mood swings, mismatched meds, and loads of depressed days laying in bed watching the world pass me by before I found a healthy treatment option. My ADHD diagnosis came first in May 2021. I tried Adderall to help this and hated it, cut it out, tried some others, but still haven't found something that's the right mix for me, but... Thankfully, this started me down the reading rainbow that brought me to researching autism, something that I had denied to myself secretly for over a year before it later being confirmed in early 2023. Everything about this late discovery process is tough, mentally more than anything, but I want to say for anyone else going through a similar situation as an adult... You're not alone, and you're not wrong or dumb or anything else for not knowing. I am much more comfortable in my own skin these days. But now, I find myself struggling with the on-camera confidence here on YouTube that used to come to me naturally. Like, 
how the hell was I uploading 200 plus videos a year between two channels? That could not have been healthy. I guess that could be healthy if you had an entire team, but it's literally just me and my wife. Speaking of my wife, I know that I'm not alone because she too is on the autism spectrum, which probably explains why we click so well. And so are some other friends and creators I've spoken to, which is an amazing support system to have. And for the first time in my life, I actually feel like I belong somewhere without having to fight to justify it. Autism essentially explains why I've always felt left out, different, like I'll never fit in, since even my own extended family treated me like an alien, and I held this all to myself for so long, masking emotions and mannerisms to better fit the role I thought I was supposed to play, only to realize that uh, maybe I've been trying to erase and suppress what could be a superpower for 30 years. I've always seen myself like a broken mannequin constantly in need of repairs, as if I'm fucking Pinocchio dying to become a real boy. I am real, I am flawed and imperfect. I am worthy of love, I am worthy of success when it's worked for, and right now I'm vowing to not give up, personally or professionally. Because over the past two years, I unintentionally did shut down because of how much I've struggled to come to understand my own medical stuff and that of my parents, whose health has unfortunately really declined in recent years. A lot of my apathy stems from my depression, and the cycles seem to find new ways to start themselves all over again. But just knowing who I am, what I'm up against, identifying bad habits, that's, that's half the battle right there. So with everyone's support, I want to bounce back, reinvent, Try new things, new videos, and carry on to the next chapter instead of reading the same page over and over. Oh, thank you so much for watching what is undoubtedly the most personal video I've ever dropped. There's still plenty of friends and family that have no idea I'm on the spectrum, so here I am, naked in front of the crowd. Hope you still like me! If you want to continue supporting my content, just make sure you're subscribed and turn on channel notifications for ARTV and Beyond ARTV, because watching, liking, commenting is really all it takes. We also stream right here on ARTV every Sunday night at 7pm Eastern, reacting to music you send me, so join the community as we continue growing there, and I'm going to push to do even more of my content live and make videos out of the VODs. Appreciate all of you who have stuck with me through the years of ups and downs. I know it's been a bumpy ride. But I'm still standing, and I'll see you soon with more right here on ARTV, of which the AR obviously stands for Autistic Reviewer. Who knew?